We are back with part two of Vinyl Record Listening Room Examples. We had so much interest and so many people who wanted to showcase their rooms that it was worth it to do a whole nother video. So let's dive in a whole nother set of examples on this episode of Talking About Records. My name is G.I. Sanders from NTX Vinyl, a small chain of independent record stores in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. If you're not local but you are in the U.S., you can shop online anytime at ntxvinyl.com. Love it if you'd subscribe to our channel here on YouTube and follow us across social media at NTX Vinyl on Facebook and Instagram. All right, we are back with part two of a video that honestly has blown me away. It's funny, you have these ideas for these videos. Sometimes you walk away from them going like, oh man, this is a slam dunk. Like, this is such great content. People are going to love it. And then, you know, you know, falls kind of flat. Like, no one really cares. And then other times you do videos where you're like, oh, this kind of feels piecemeal together. Like, I don't, I don't, um, you know, I'm not sure. And then it takes off, you know. And this is one of those where, and I get it though in hindsight. It's easy to see after the fact because so many people saw part one of this video and we're like, this is amazing. It's so cool to see what listening rooms and setups look like in real people's houses. Like, because most of the listening rooms you see, like if you're looking at like, um, uh, you know, in like magazines or like online stuff where they're featuring stuff, like the turntables and the uh, components in the rooms in the collections, like they cost tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars like it seems so unattainable and they're amazing to look at don't get me wrong um but it's not reality because most people can't afford it most people wouldn't even if they had the money wouldn't spend it on that or you know, i would but um you get what i'm saying like i think the first video the first part one of this what it showed me is that people appreciate seeing like real people's listening rooms not like um totally dedicated audio files which that's amazing too like but that's not most people like most people listen to records they have maybe a couple hundred records they spent you know some decent money on a turntable or an amplifier and then that's about as far as it goes and they get tons of enjoyment out of that and that's what i think it represented because so many people said it was great to see others uh setups to get ideas to get inspiration and just to know that you know they're not alone and that type of thing so i thought it was super cool so uh, there were so many people who saw the video on YouTube, the first one, and joined the Now Spinning group. So just for context, ntxnowspinning.com, that's where this all comes from. It's a Facebook group. It's called Now Spinning, sponsored by my shop, NTX Vinyl. There were a ton of people who saw the YouTube video and joined the group, which is obviously awesome. Love to have them in the community. Love to have uh, new people coming and joining the Now Spinning group. And then at the same time, you had tons of people in the Now Spinning group who were like, oh, I didn't see that. I would love it if you talk about my room. And so you then had people on Now Spinning who would want to see their, you know, their room featured on the next one. So I had over, I think, 50 more submissions of these listening rooms. So I'm not going to get to them all in this video. So there's going to be a part three. So if you're not, if you didn't make it in part one, if you don't see your, your room in part two, I'm going to do my best to get to it in part three. And I know I'm going to miss some um, because I was doing this all in the Facebook group, trying to make sure I grabbed it all. But there's a lot of comments and uh, kind of hard to keep track of. So I'm going to do my best to feature as many as possible. Let's get to it. I got like 25 or so to get through here. So I'm going to do my very best. Again, these are all members of the Now Spinning group, ntxnowspinning.com. If you want to join that community, let's kick it off. First listening room we're going to look at is from Andy Goldblatt. All right. Andy has got a comfy couch, a little L-shaped couch. She's got some, uh, let's look at the artwork first. Uh, some what looks like completely custom stones artwork, which is really cool. Love the sticky fingers and flowers cover. Uh, those are really, really cool. Um, turntable. Um, someone said uh, that my entire channel, or at least these videos, should be sponsored by Ikea, and I 
totally agree. So Ikea, if you're listening, I would love a sponsorship. Um, here's the first Ikea we'll see. This is a, looks like a three by three, or maybe that's an off brand because I don't think Ikea makes a three by three. They only make four by fours, but uh, uh, very similar to Ikea. I've got a killer Miles Davis box set in the middle there. Um, I've got that Beastie Boys book as well. Uh, uh, the crate on the top left looks like it's probably like a new arrivals crate. That's typically what uh, what that's for. I, I use one. Similarly, things that I'm listening to or just got in. Uh, can't tell the brand of a turntable. Looks like maybe a project. Um, and looks like the amplifier next to that and some floor standing speakers. So a nice cozy little space. Small room. Probably puts out a ton of sound for that size of room for sure. So... That's Andy Goldblatt kicking that off. Next on the list, we've got Bill Brindle. All right, two shots from Bill so we can see the whole room. First of all, we got the turntable. Uh, tower speakers, they, they look like uh, very similar to my speakers. Might be Polk Audio um, size-wise. Also a center channel with the, the turntable and amp. I talked about this last video. It's, it's crazy how many people have hybrid living room, media room, listening rooms. I, to me, it's crazy, but I think it's honestly commonplace that people have that because people don't have room necessarily for dedicated spaces. So I think it makes perfect sense. So that's the case in Bill's case. He's got the, uh, uh, the flat screen. You've got the, uh, some albums featured on the wall over there. Johnny Cash, Allman Brothers, Skinner and Pink Floyd. I like that. Bill, um, it's December 12th and I can tell that Bill or, and or Bill's wife, um, is very ahead on, on wrapping Christmas gifts, so kudos to you there. Well ahead of the game. Now you flip it around. Here is uh, Bill's Calyx, which is a uh, it looks like a two by four, and a lot of liquor. It's Christmas time. Bill's in good shape. Plus you got Band on the Run, King Crimson, Sticky Fingers, and the Clash. Come on, good stuff. So great setup from Bill. Looks like a nice, uh, good hybrid hybrid living room listening space. Brian Canberra. So here's a little, uh, uh, just kind of like a corner, corner listening space, simple, uh, turntable setup, some small speakers, probably not a huge room. Um, and a, a three by three Calyx it looks like a U-turn turntable. And again, some extra storage off to the side. That's a common thing. And I think one of the things that a lot of people look at these videos for is like storage. It's like, what happens when you run out of space? You know, do I just put an extra bin? Like, how do I, where do I grow? How do I grow? Do I go up? Do I go down? Like, what is it? So nice, uh, nice little corner setup from uh, Brian Canberra. All right, next up, Christian Garcia. Oh, I remember this one. This is a beautiful space. So I remember Christian's comments on this was that, um, Anytime, I'm paraphrasing his comments in the Now Spending Group, but I remember him saying that anytime they have people over, they're hosting, that at the end of the night, they always end up in this room listening to music and playing music. So love the, the piano. is beautiful. Got a couple different instruments. A guitar. Looks like maybe a mandolin down there. Um, nice comfy chair and ottoman. Uh, love the, the white speaker stands with the white and kind of wood-grained um, Bookshelf speakers that are kind of mounted there matches the turntable and the amp very nicely with the wood grain. So very well coordinated room, beautiful setup. Um, love the uh, love the white and the wood, and they've got and and here's another thing I'll I'll point out if you see and I think those are calyx. It's hard to tell what's a calyx and what's off brand. Um, that looks like off brand, meaning it's a different brand from calyx. Uh, but it's got, see the feet on it? A lot of people asked about the feet, whether or not you can put feet on a calyx, and you absolutely can. You just have to make sure and put them every two cubes. You can't put them every four because then it'll start to sag at the bottom, I would presume, if you fill it up with records. But it really does help to get your shelving up off the ground a little bit, not only because it's a little higher, you don't have to go down so low when you're looking for a record on the bottom shelf, but really I just think visually it enhances the whole look of a calyx when it's up off the ground, even just four to six inches, which is what those legs are. Um, Ikea sells legs specific for calyx that you can look into um, and they're not very expensive and they're easy to attach and they're super sturdy. I have all my calyx on them. So great looking room from Christian Garcia. Love the uh, cleanliness of it. Next on the list, Christian Lindblom. I got two photos here. Okay. So here's the turntable. Um, some nice stereo components. Looks like a cool table, kind of illuminated. Um, it's hard to tell in the picture. Um, definitely a holiday theme going on. Nice speaker stands again, TV front and center, love 
uh, very, uh, very common from what we're seeing. And then on the opposite wall, some really, uh, really unique storage here. Not only do you have uh, the LP, so I can't tell, I think this is probably Calyx um, from Ikea, um, because they, yeah, it is, because they definitely make those uh, drawers and doors that are very easy add-ons. So I love this, how, uh, how Christian has chosen to put records in certain spaces, but then use storage for others. I doubt there's records in those middle ones. There could be. And then there's like some sort of display case in the middle, which it looks like for, at least for the holidays, they've got like holiday theme with it all lit up. So beautiful setup and a really cool, interesting use of uh, like a standard Calyx unit, the way you can split it up and make it unique. So I think that's a, a really cool, uh, really cool way to uh, house your collection amongst other things in a room, which again is, a, is the norm for a lot of people. Next up, Clyde Marr. That's a lot of records. TV dead center. I always like when the, the records are kind of wrapped around, whether it's the TV or the audio components. I think that's a cool look. Um, really cool configuration of artwork in this room, especially on that left-hand side. It looks like family photos and stuff above the couch, which is cool. Um, it's hard for me to tell. I think the turntable might be dead center underneath the TV, but it's kind of a dark photo, so I can't tell there. But uh, speakers up left and right. Um, center channel, definitely, again, hybrid uh, kind of media room. Probably watching uh, plenty of movies and sports in here in addition to spinning records. Plenty of records to choose from for sure. Oh, I think I see the t uh, turntable now. It's on the far right um, behind that record that's kind of popped up. So it's hard to tell, but I think that's where it's at. So cool looking space. Um, definitely got a lot of music jammed into that room. I see what looks like CDs or maybe DVDs on the sides as well. So great looking, uh, great looking room from Clyde. All right, Colton Hutchinson. Here's a cool space. Um, I like the uh, the the wall decorations. I forget what those are called, but you can slip records in and out of them. You can see how it's like a two by four grid, and it's very easy to slip records in and out of those things. Um, I forget what they're called. Again, you can Google it um, and find them pretty easy, but I like it because it's accessible to get your records in and out. Um, you've got, uh, that's definitely not, I don't think that's a Calyx on the left-hand side because again, it's a three by three. It is stacked with records, lots of box sets on top, uh, hard to tell what the turntable is here. And then some, some legit floor standing speakers. Um, you've got a ton of great music represented in this photo from the new Matt Cameron record to Royal Blood, who I just saw. Uh, Pretty Hay Machine, Bad Brains, Rage, you got Pearl Jam, the new Black Pumas, tons of great stuff. Great music going on in this room. Anthrax over here on the left. Awesome room. Awesome setup, Colton. All right, next up we've got Daryl Shannon. Um, obviously a man cave. Got the neon side. Uh, some great uh, dividers inspired by mine, I would uh, suspect. Um, turntable in the middle, lots of records. Oh, I remember this. Uh, Daryl said this is not only a listening room, but also he collects um, board games. So that whole, like that kind of triangle looking uh, unique uh, shelf in the back is for board games. And then you can tell with the light, that really unique light that's overhanging the table, um, that would be useful, obviously, uh, if you're sitting down playing a game of, uh, I don't know, Monopoly, Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know. What do you play, Daryl? Let us know kind of games do you collect that's pretty cool very unique i like uh it's hard to hard to tell specifics on where like i see some speakers up top i don't know if that's uh specific to the turntable probably is but a great looking collection all right next up dustin crowley certainly in a festive mood in their listening room um several different calyx units lots of festive lights in addition to the christmas tree um, my actually listening room is one of the only rooms in my house that I, there's not a Christmas tree. My wife goes crazy with Christmas. There's Christmas trees all over the house. Um, but we don't have one in my room just cause there's not really space for it. Although I'm sure she could find a spot, but this is a cool setup. I love to see the holiday vibe coming into the listening room. Cause again, if you're spending a lot of time in your space, listening to records, um, you know, or watching movies or whatever, it makes sense that you would kind of bring the, the holiday decorating into it. So cool looking setup from Dustin, a lot of, uh, a lot of records. It's hard for me to tell what's on the back. I think I see the used. Um, oh, I see Dave Matthews on the wall. So all definitely, uh, you know, again, commonalities between so many of these listening rooms is, is using the album 
albums as artwork. I think it's a no-brainer. Everyone does it. I do it. It's it's beautiful. Part of a huge part of vinyl is the artwork. It's the display. It's it's the fact that it's real sized and not a thumbnail on your phone. So showing it off, I think, is a, a no-brainer, and most people um, follow suit there. So it looks like speakers are top left and right on this room, but we can't see where the seating is. But uh, but cool looking setup from Dustin. All right, Jack Rogers. Here is. Um, all right, so you got TV dead center, you've got stereo components covered. And I remember a comment from Jack too. Um, as you can see, he's got all the cabinets open. Most of the times in most setups, records are exposed, which for me, I actually kind of love. I love the fact that you can kind of see the records because they are a visual in themselves. But Jack made the comment that his wife likes that you can close the cabinets and you don't see them. My wife would like that too. Um, honestly, but so that's pretty unique because most, uh, so this is a unique console that it has the ability to close. Whereas most like, again, standard Calix units, you can't really do that. Um, even the cabinet on the uh, right hand side there, you can see he's got those closed. Uh, it's hard to tell. I think the speakers are left and right on that main console. So some floor standing speakers. And then again, it's hard to tell stereo components, but I see more, see some CDs down there as well. And, uh, it looks like maybe an Audio Technica turntable next to the uh, um, the TV there, but it's hard to tell. Something like that, and some artwork on the wall. You got Lucinda Williams. You got uh, uh, Leon up there. Leon Russell, Santana, buddy guy. Good setup from Jack. All right, next on the list, we're making our way through. This is from a uh, longtime now spinning member, Jason Janik. Jason has got an amazing collection, of not only records as you can see on that back wall. CDs on the right. That's a crazy, crazy big CD collection. Love the, uh, love the furniture. Um, very, uh, very kind of mid-century modern, which is awesome. Super cool rug. Totally unique Christmas tree. Uh, okay, and here's a shot. Here's a secondary shot of the components, which are hard to see in that first shot. But again, it's it's hard to see the whole room complete. Um, a lot of stereo uh, components here. I know Jason does all formats and uh, man, and uh, it's floor standing speakers. I know he's got his sub down below from other posts, but a great looking room. A lot, it's a lot, there's a lot going on. It's hard to even uh, tell what's going on here from an audio components standpoint, but oh, awesome room from Jason. All right, next on the list, Jeff Owens. All right, spinning some. We got some Jason Isbell, Drive By Truckers, Kiss, Tom Petty. Love the representation there. This is unique. Talk about um, um, you know making use of your space. And I don't know if this would be recommended from audiophiles. I suspect no. Uh, but the speakers are actually below, and then a countertop above them with the turntable and the components. Um, that's very unique. Not something you see. It looks like some custom-made shelving for records on the left there. And certainly uh, certainly Jeff's uh, doing more than just listening to music with a bunch of different guitars in the room. So probably playing some music down there too. So cool setup from Jeff. I think this was like a basement type setup if I remember correctly. It's hard by the time I drag these photos and save them all with people's names. I, I sometimes remember what the context is because a lot of people tell me, but it's hard to remember. But I think that was the case here. All right, next up we got John Jones. Again, another musician. That's another cool thing about so many of these photos uh, of these listening rooms is you can tell people are just music nuts, which is awesome because so many have pianos and guitars and, and stuff to create music as opposed to just li listen to music. So first of all, let's just talk about the greatness of those eight albums in the middle. You've got Elvis, uh, self-titled, you got Revolver, Let It Bleed, you've got Who's Next, Blood on the Tracks, Led Zeppelin to Ramones, and, and The Clash. Come on. Awesome set. Um, it's hard to tell what type of turntable and amp and everything is there, but you've got, you've got a variety of storage going on here because you've got uh, records in two different spaces on the left. You've got what I think are CDs, although those could be DVDs. Um, back kind of straight back and then you've got records down be below the console i suspect there's probably organization here in regards to genre um as far as how this is split up but um which is similar to my own setup um rug couch coffee table is that a great space not only to listen to but to create as well all right juan elizondo i remember this 
because he mentioned in this that not only is this his listening space, but it's also his snake's listening space. So you've got this cage right on the left, which I think was a bald python, I believe. I might be wrong, but I remember him saying that. And this is one of those, definitely a, a hybrid workspace listening room slash reptile den, obviously. Um, you got the turntable and, and some, some, uh, some little speakers in the back. You've got a calyx with what looks like a couple hundred records back there and probably a great space to get some work done for Juan. Kyle Powers is next. This is, uh, let's see, some cool, uh, cool looking speakers. I'm sure someone will tell me what those are. TV, dead center. Uh, turntable, it's kind of hard to see in components, and I suspect some vinyl storage underneath there. It looks like CDs on the right. Um, you've got, again, combination of sports memorabilia and music memorabilia going on. Um, very common. Looks like a cool place, cool setup, and definitely, I suspect, kind of a living room hybrid uh, space that Kyle's got here. All right, Leslie Hunter. Um, kind of similar, uh, I suspect. I, yeah, I can't see if there's a TV, but I'm thinking the, these chairs are probably pointing at one. And you've got a custom custom 3x3 three three shelf with records. And it's a dark photo, but I see the turntable up on the right. I also see an old school type of uh, like a what looks like a uh, combo audio unit of some sort. I'm, I'm not sure where speakers may be here. Um, Oh, yeah, and I remember the comment, too, that they've got a bunch of 45s, um, 7-inch singles in that, that chair, uh, the shelf behind the chair there with Leslie. All right, Michelle Massey. I remember Michelle's comment saying, you know, this is my little uh, little corner of music. Uh, totally custom 2x2 two two calyx, as you can tell. Um, paint it. You don't see a lot of people take their calyx and decorate them and paint them custom but i love i love that that's the case here um this is a good example of how it doesn't take much you know if you if you've only got a limited space or you're just starting out like this is great a little two by two calyx you've probably got a hundred records there amplifier turntable i can't tell where the speakers are they're probably close by but nice little corner set up in a window um, and if you're getting enjoyment out of it that's all that matters that's all that freaking matters michael doyle all right um I love that um, turntable. I forget the brand. I think it's a Marantz, maybe, um, or something like that. It starts with an M, but it's like a clear, clear or frosted acrylic almost. Um, and it looks like components are on the left, a couple different speaker sets, so it's hard to tell what's going on. Um, so I see a subwoofer. I also see a massive Guns N' Roses box set, which is super cool. And the music on the wall, you got Weather Vanes, you got Zach Bryan, you've got Cannonball. Looks like spinning right now. Some eagles. Couple calyx units on the floor. Cool setup. All right. Minor Paredes. This is, uh, you got it again, standard two by four calyx. Art, uh, you know, custom artwork on the wall. You've got a, a nice little ledge for what's spinning. You got a real, real small turntable set up and some small speakers, but hey, if you're uh, if you're enjoying it, man, that's all that counts. Again, I, I think I say that on every one, but that's the truth here. Uh, it looks like this is kind of almost in a. Uh, I can I think I see the kitchen through there, so this is probably in a living area, kind of a hybrid space, and probably something where you can hear that even even with just that size of speakers, probably fills fills that space a little bit. All right, Nick Baluli. This is one of uh, one of the more unique ones, I think, because a couple things. Uh, because of the furniture, the rug, the ottoman, and that wall in the back is just beautiful. Um, it's amazing how much an accent wall like that can make a room. Um, and I know Nick mentioned that he's got a, this is an old photo. He's got a ton more records now. But you can see we've got calyx with the feet on it on the left. You've got uh, uh, some sort of calyx or similar back left and right. And then you can see turntable left and right. So just a, a really cleanly designed room and i remember nick telling me that this his room is featured in some sort of documentary on uh on listening rooms that i need to follow up on and check out but awesome looking space from nick all right we are making our way through here is peter spite so uh i think this was a work in progress you can tell from the uh it was like a brand new project turntable um you know a couple uh freestanding uh speaker stands and then you got a small collection of two by four 
Uh, so again, a starting out point, something if you don't have a lot of space, how do you work a system into this type of thing? Here's a great, uh, a great example, just like we saw from uh, Michelle's earlier, where you can, uh, you can, you can squeeze, you know, a couple hundred records into a small space, a uh, nice turntable, some nice clean speakers, and, and get a decent sound. And again, you're not going for like audiophile. You're not going to blow anyone's. Uh, roof off with with sound but if you get enjoyment at it and if it, it creates a, uh, a good environment for you that's what counts richard davis so i featured richard i remember a portion of his room in the first episode and he threw this one in because this was the opposite side which you couldn't see so um so here's uh, richard's turntable his amp a ton more records uh, more front facing shelving on top on the left there which i know he had in previous and then a ton of really cool framed artwork by a bunch of metal bands is what it looks like 80s metal uh i see maiden and dio and saxon uh very cool um got the speakers kind of in front of the calyx which is interesting and then again more alternate front facing storage on that right rack so very cool space from richard all right ryan johnson a lot going on, on this one um, and of course you get bonus points because if you look on the far right at his workstation or gaming station or whatever that is, you've actually got me talking about records on the TV right there. So bonus points to Ryan, which is really funny. Um, and then you've got a lot going on. It's, it's hard for me that I see, I see turntable front. Oh, this was a, you can see like there's a workout machine too. So this was a hybrid like workspace, um, certainly, um, listening room and media viewing room and uh, just a workspace. Like, there's just a lot going on, <laughs> which I remember him saying that was the case. So uh, I'm, I'm just kind of soaking it in. Lots of artwork, lots of pop culture. Very, very cool space, Ryan. All right, we've got a few more. The next one is from Scott Stableford. Uh, really killer setup here. Definitely, uh, definitely upping the game from an audio uh perspective i i don't know what these components are but they look very impressive and i bet they sound freaking amazing and there there will be an audio file who will comment on this and who tell me exactly what's going on or maybe scott will himself i remember there were multiple photos from scott of like his listening his chair and i remember this was directly what his chair was looking at and those two tower speakers in the foreground there i bet will blow your ears off in a good way and then here's one example of some of his records probably has more this looks like a ton of if i had to guess prod, probably audio file pressings and stuff and it's hard to tell what's going on turntable wise and amp wise but great looking setup from scott stephen hill is next all right stephen's got uh you got a tube amp you got a custom console um a small little rack with some records really i love that little custom console i, I suspect the turntables in there if you slide that uh slide that drawer over i love the the older vintage consoles especially if you get them um you know refurbished and up to speed so the, the turntable sounds great so uh that's definitely uh one way to go if you can track one down but so you've got a tube amp up top and it looks like a, a a working functioning kind of radio if, if you will and so i suspect again the turntable is probably in that left cabinet just a couple more this one is from tamir Engdahl. Um, Tamir has got some really great artwork on the wall, including some records. I love the Soundgarden Pearl Jam poster, which is a very famous print. Um, it looks like probably a U-turn turntable, some floor standing speakers on the right. Um, you can see the open cabinet where you've got vinyl storage underneath. It looks like maybe a bar liquor armoire cabinet on the right. So great looking space, really cool chandelier. Um, so cool space from Tamir. Thanks for sharing with us. My good friend, Tim Arnold, this is his space. Um, a portion of his space, as you can tell, because I think pretty sure it wraps the room, but um, a lot of records. I know Tim is not only into records, but pretty much any audio format, CD cassettes. Um, and I know he just recently got this chair, which he loves. So he's got a comfy, comfy space to sit and enjoy his collection. I, I didn't catch where... The turntable wasn't here it's probably on the opposite side of the room but appreciate you sharing that tim next up we've got trey keister trey's got um front facing storage on the right um you've got some pretty big speakers be sitting next to that turntable 
Um, but he does have the turntable on something that uh, looks like a, a, a block or a pad or something that maybe will reduce vibration. Because that's always the fear. If you have your speakers on the same um, uh, platform or the same surface as your turntable and you really crank it up, you might get some vibration and cause your turntable, uh, your tone arm to skip around. But obviously, it's probably not the case. Either he's not turning it up that loud or, uh, or it, it just doesn't, uh, doesn't have an effect like that. Um, definitely a catch all of kind of trinkets and pop culture. You got baby Yoda up there. You got Yoda, real Yoda. You got Spock, you got an X-Wing. So big star Wars fan. And again, I like the, uh, front facing, front facing, um, record store, like browsing as opposed to the spines out. You don't see it that often, but it, but it is cool. So great space from Trey last, but not least we have Tumas. Sarinin, and I forget where Tumas is from. I'm apologizing for butchering the name. This is a unique one. Um, and the, the unique thing is you can see that he's got like a corner with his collection. It's like you can actually curtain it off, which I find to be very, very interesting. I don't know how often he closes the curtains on that or if you even can, or maybe it's just for a visual, but it looks really cool. I can see way back in that corner where the turntable is with the records. I just thought that was a unique totally unique vibe in regards to those curtains and that lighting back there. So a neat looking space. That's obviously again, a hybrid of a living area with the couch and the chairs and everything. Um, and it looks like the speakers on the sides of the TV is probably where the audio is coming out if I had to guess. So cool looking setup back in that corner from Tumas. So there you go, y'all. That's like another 25 examples. We're going to have to do a part three. There's so many more. I had over 50 and I don't want to leave anyone out. So I did kind of cut it off at this point because at a certain point it's hard to keep track. But all of these, again, are real world examples coming from members of the Now Spinning group, ntxnowspinning.com. I can't thank everyone enough for sharing these photos. It's fun for me to go look through them in real time. I haven't really looked at them in advance and dissected them. So I'm kind of just going in real time and reacting to them. Um, but fun for me to see, gives me ideas, hopefully gives you ideas, and just shows you what uh, what record collectors are doing these days, how they're listening to records, how they're experiencing them. So appreciate you as always. Stay tuned for a part three in the coming weeks. So we'll get it out as soon as I can. But until then, enjoy. My name is GI. This has been another episode of Talking About Records, and we'll see you again soon.